Voices to Hear. Welcome everyone to Voices to Hear podcast. Today we will talk about life in Aruba with Alex. Alex, can you introduce yourself and tell about your background in Aruba? Hello guys, I am Alex from Aruba. I am right now here working for VCS for two months. And well, my life in Aruba has been an incredible 18 years. It has been a nice experience and I will continue to live there for at least another year. So far, it has given me the opportunity to enjoy the sea life and the water sport life. I think our whole family has had similar experiences where we all have enjoyed the beach and swimming a lot, doing sailing and surfing, wind surfing, some of us kite surfing. And it's just been really nice for us to have that possibility in Aruba where it's perfect weather for its warm, breezy, and just nice waters. Okay. You are here volunteering in Macedonia. Can you tell me like the notable cultural differences that you experienced here, like compared to Aruba and European countries? Yes. I think I experienced similar differences amongst the European countries where the biggest difference we face in Aruba is where there there's already so many different cultures that it's just in one day you will experience at least three different languages and three different traditions or uh, cultures going through a Ruben or an American and Colombian or Dutch man or woman. So I think that's the biggest difference. You you don't just hear one language when you're out uh, walking around on the road or on the streets. Unlike here where you just hear Macedonian and everyone sort of has the same culture. Even though you have Albanians here, I still feel like the difference is way smaller than in Aruba. Right, because in Aruba you actually speak four languages. Yeah. What are those languages? Well, I think I speak for most Arubans when I say Dutch, Spanish, Pavimento, and English. We have a lot of English TV, but we also have Spanish TV, and we get Dutch in, at school, so we're all obligated to learn Dutch through school. I think for some, Dutch would be least used and just in day-to-day -day life if it wasn't for school. And then, of course, most importantly, we all speak Papimento, uh, which is a Caribbean language between mostly Portuguese and Spanish. But it also has roots in African and Dutch and also a little bit of English influence, definitely uh -huh. nowadays. Mm -hmm. How does the lifestyle in Aruba looks like for you, like your daily activities? For me, definitely lately been just like water focused with my best friend uh, i'll go free diving every day or uh, every two days and i'll try to go with my brother or also my friends surfing i definitely in the weekends i'm always sailing i give sailing lessons on saturdays the, the entirety of saturday i'm always spending it out at sea in the sun the salt the kids it's When I come home after those days, I'm the most exhausted you'll ever see me. It's just a combination, which is like horrible, but I love it still. And then Sundays, I'll almost often spend with my dad and my brother and friends on our family boat. And also just most of the time, spend a whole day out about checking places where we can anchor and swim or whatever, mm -hmm. do fun activities. Yeah. And what about the weather in Aruba? I know that like the whole year, it's mostly the warm weather. Yeah. The only difference we experience is we have a, a less rainy season and a more rainy season. So we have the rainy season and the dry season. Mm -hmm. Except for this difference, we don't really see a, a big differences in either uh, temperature, wind, time the sun sets and the time the sun rises. Mm -hmm. It's always between six to seven. So we really just experience like a summer climate the whole year through. It never gets cold. 
we do sometimes experience a little bit of difference from the hurricane season, mm-hmm. although we're not in the hurricane belt. Hurricanes pass high above us, and we sometimes get affected a little bit by surges or waves and gusts. So it, sometimes we get a little bit of wind because there's a hurricane passing over okay. the northern islands, or we get bigger waves, but nothing dangerous, just most of the time things we can make use of by going surfing or oh. sailing more or sailing less if it's too windy. The way you live in Aruba, it's mostly about the water activities, how the work looks like for you. Yeah, so it started when I was eight, eight or seven, I think. Mm-hmm. I rejoined the sailing school and I started with a girlfriend of mine, uh, Fivian, it was like this girl. Mm-hmm. And we started around the same time sailing in this really small boat called an Optimist. Mm-hmm. It's about two meters long. We call it the bathtub in Dutch. With this, I started getting my first sort of professional sailing experience. I'd sailed so much, like I had gone along with my dad or my brother and my sister so much already. But this is when I started learning how to sail alone. Okay. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And really fast, we became better at it. Me and also my friend. Eventually, we got this girl, lady, who came from abroad to uh, help us learn and get to the next level Uh because we had sort of reached this barrier and she was a really good sailor so she gave us the chance to surpass it Uh eventually we became a team of three me bringing in a friend he was also an incredible sailor and we went abroad we sailed in competitions from Bonaire Curacao to Miami oh that's amazing until I was uh, uh, 10, almost 11, uh, I stopped. They carried on for a while. Mm-hmm. Why did you stop? I stopped because my mom passed away. Mm-hmm. And I was in a competition in Miami when we got the message that my mom was in a very bad condition. Mm-hmm. And then my dad and my brother and my sister had just arrived in Miami to spectate my competitions. Yeah. And when they arrived, they got... They, at the airport, they received the message that she was in critical condition. So they made a decision that they will be going back the same day. And I made a decision with my sister too, that I would also be going back that day, not finishing my competitions. Mm-hmm. And when I got back, it was just the conditions at home and between the family were in such a way where for some reason I didn't feel the need to do the sailing. This what I had like mm. such a passion for. I sometimes regret stopping. I think there's no world where I wouldn't have stopped, but I wish I had just started again sooner. But eventually I did start again. And this time I started with just a few classes. But again, I was already at the level where I couldn't really learn anything. Yeah. I was, my level was mostly above the others. So I became an instructor pretty fast. And that's what I've been doing for the past few years. And it's been really fun. I really love teaching kids. Sometimes it's tough. Of course, and when they, kids. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll get frustrated when they mm-hmm. don't learn that fast. So you have to keep repeating something. You need patience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You also, we the instructors, make the most out of it. We'll do the craziest and funnest things. I've had so many experiences on Saturdays sailing that have nothing to do with the teaching. <laughs> like, I remember we had a boat capsized and a part of the boat fell into the water. And it was quite deep, but um, we, it was expensive. So we wanted to yeah. find it. And what we did was we tied a rope behind the boat mm-hmm. and I hung up myself onto it. So I held, held onto the rope okay. with a mask so uh-huh. I could see underwater. Yeah. And the boat was just going around in circles dragging me along oh, uh, along with it yeah. while I was looking down and I was like a dolphin just like <laughs> going up and down breathing and then going down again to look and find it. We never found it oh, but we tried then. for like an hour. It was just me and my friend switching between who was laying in what the water. But it is a fun memory. From, yeah, from yeah, there. yeah. And like other things like that. I remember uh, we have a harbor very close to where we teach mm-hmm. and there you have these big floaties like I don't know what they're called, buoys or something, Mm -hmm. that are used to avoid the ships hitting the seashore, just the the hard stones. Instead, they hit these and it's squishy. 
it for the boats yeah, it's yeah. squishy for us for it's so, like really hard because they're so mm -hmm. huge and they're made for these big boats mm -hmm. Makes and sense. i remember one day we went to them three of our friends climbed onto it mm -hmm. and it started spinning oh no but it was these big things spinning so we kept trying to climb up and like if one couldn't keep up he fell into the water and it was kind of scary uh like climbing up these big things dangerous. while they keep spinning like towards you yeah that was really fun and if you would stop for a moment you would all of a sudden be almost in the water again you would start climbing again that's scary that's yeah scary. <laughs> it was, it's all been really fun yeah definitely uh, also, like Aruba is for the tourists. Did you interact with foreigners, like teach them, instruct them? We surprisingly have a big part of our students be Dutch coming mm -hmm. to Aruba. Most of the time, not permanently, mm -hmm. but for a few years when their parents join the army in Aruba, well, technically we have the Dutch army, but they like they have some sort of transfer like order so they come to Aruba to work here for the army for a little while obviously they bring their families and they enjoy their time I notice very often that they're like at the beach a lot because maybe it's, it's for them it's even more incredible when they come to this like Caribbean island coming yeah. from Europe so they try to make the most out of it we have a ton of kids that are kids of like families that are doing this sort of thing coming to Aruba Besides that, we don't have many foreigners, at least not at my sailing school. Obviously, in a day-to-day -day life, you always meet tourists, most of the time American tourists. Yeah. On the streets, you'll hear them or you'll see cars with a V. In Aruba, V cars means they're uh, rented cars. Uh -huh. So most of the times you'll see those like everywhere. And then you'll know that there's tourists like driving around. We make this joke when... Tourists start, like, when we see a car take, making a weird roundabout or something, then we're like, oh, it has to be a tourist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then we check if the car has a fee, and if it has a fee, we're like, ah, yeah, that's that the one. That was right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a ton of tourists. Sometimes it makes it a little bit too full. And during the COVID, you really experienced what the effects are of how many tourists we are. Uh -huh. Just by the change Aruba went through when there were not none. In sea life, you experienced so much more. You saw so many more turtles and so many more fish. Uh -huh. And the coral was even starting to sort of be, get a chance to revive and uh, regrow. Uh -huh. And the water was just more like visible. There was less sand rise in the water. So the water wasn't as uh, dirty. It looked more clean. Yeah. And even on land, like you, there were also differences you could experience with seeing more animals going on the just through the mundi, as we call it, which is for us sort of our forest. You would just see more animals because there was less people walking through the trails and stuff yeah. like that. So the the island was starting to recover really fast, and it also gives us hope now when we don't see them now because we know that it only takes a few months or a month for the tourists to be gone, and within. This short amount of time, Aruba already can recover from something quite quickly. But I think you're actually dependent of the tourism. Yeah, definitely. As much as I would love to see the island 24-7 with not a single tourist. Mm -hmm. we, we're all, no matter what we say, we're all dependent in one way or another from the tourists. Mm -hmm. It's our main source of income. I don't know, something like 80 or 90% of our income is tourists. Mm -hmm. And we also noticed this in COVID. It was incredibly problematic when we had to send away all the tourists so yeah as much as we sometimes get annoyed by them or don't like them we have some sort of great underlying respect knowing that without them we would not have any income i see but arubians are actually like welcoming people yeah the towards americans they're incredibly like heartwarming and they're really polite and nice what's you the reason for that I think one way or another is really just because we all know that we live off of them. Mm -hmm. It's they leech our island, but we leech their money in a way. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not in any way. I'm not trying to do, use it as a bad figure of speech. Mm -hmm. We're not doing anything bad to them, or the, like it, I'm not trying to imply that we're doing bad, anything bad to them, or they're anything bad to us. But it's really just that we know that we're in this 
synchronized harmony and yeah. so we respect them uh-huh. as they as we hope they will respect our island too yeah. and you, you really notice it when you're in traffic a big difference i noticed between big c- cities in europe and in aruba here if you see someone walking towards like a crossroad the cars already stop we don't have traffic lights for people to cross because uh-huh. we will stop no matter what. We don't have traffic lights. Yeah, we don't uh, even yeah, we don't have traffic lights in general actually. That's interesting. Um, I don't know if we have one left. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, at some point, I don't know how long ago they started taking them all away and they started putting everywhere where we had a uh-huh. crossroad where we used to have um traffic lights they started putting roundabouts but there are not so many accidents because there are no traffic lights um now with the roundabouts it's pretty okay i think there's still accidents but most accidents are still just like junk people hitting a trees uh-huh. not and on the highway not okay. per se caused by like uh, how our roundabouts are or how uh-huh. our past traffic lights have been renewed into a new form. Okay, you actually like used to live like that, so yeah, you're yeah, being yeah. careful in your way, not yeah. counting the drunk people. Yeah. What about the festivals or like big events in Aruba? Okay, for me, it's obviously I know most about the, the, the water-based, beach-based like mm-hmm. festivals. I'll start by mentioning the biggest one though, just all in all uh, festival we have in Aruba, which is Carnival. Mm-hmm. Um, we do a ton of parades, and these parades take part. They these happen on the on our roads. We close the roads, mm-hmm. and we have trucks, really big trucks with bands in them playing music, and behind them you have big speakers. The, so the music is really loud and then behind those speakers you have people walking and dancing and they just follow the trucks driving very slowly to the mm. streets. Are people dressing somehow for these festivals, carnivals? Yes, very colorful. They have like big feathers or oh, big yeah. like sort of tail you can say but mm-hmm. it's like this big, I don't know how to even explain it but they have all sort of things like hanging from their bags, incredible makeup, glitter, like pearls that they put around their eyes or mm-hmm. pearls that they put on their nose and cheeks. So yeah, they there's sometimes you see like the most incredible dresses. Mm-hmm. I've personally never done like anything, any incredible dance. I, I have joined Carnival before and I really enjoyed the mm-hmm. walking along, all the people being so cheery and enjoying the music, not caring about how our eardrums are being blasted, just enjoying it and walking along. It's incredible. Yeah. Do you think like all people from Aruba know how to dance? Yeah, I think the Arubans are, are incredible dancers, most of them. Definitely better than me. <laughs> um, I spent this last summer trying to learn from Arubans. Oh. I have this one girlfriend of mine. Joanna, she, I went out with her a lot to like mostly Spanish clubs. Uh So it wasn't like carnival music, but also carnival music. And I also, my best friend, Damar, also we, we went out to these clubs and they were dancing and I was just copying them until I understood the flow and I danced with them until they taught me how to move my hips because my hips were super stiff. (laughs) Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now I think I get the hang of it. But yeah, I I, I really love how you can go to a club and just enjoy from a show. Like sometimes there's this couple that give you the spectacle and everyone (laughs) opens up and gives them a circle where they can do their big stage like dance what kind of dances i think the most popular dance in aruba when it comes to a partner dance is bachata bachata mm. and the set the steps are quite simple but sometimes still they can do incredible moves and uh it's definitely really nice and it's also just a really close dance you can dance it slowly and just like really with your partner mm-hmm we also have merengue and salsa, but I'd say yeah, most of the time you'll hear bachata playing at every older Ruben party, or we also have these very often these barbecues uh-huh. in Aruba, a Ruben family or Latin families or whatever they will do a, a barbecue on uh-huh. the beach, which are very popular, and then there will be music, and there's always some bachata music 
in between or along or the whole time maybe even it and sounds really fun. you'll see them dancing and then they'll eat the barbecue and they'll go into the water and yeah. do you think like people can like really connect thanks to the music yeah i think i think music when it comes to latin music because it's always this sort of move your hips follow the flow mm -hmm. follow along with other people you're focused on how the other people are moving their hips and you, you just synchronize. bond yeah you all synchronize sort of mm -hmm. to the music and i think that that is sort of bonding yes and also like boost your mood yeah definitely mm -hmm. i think that's one of the 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 great things about like spanish music and it's just it makes you happy yeah that's really nice yeah what about the food in aruba how is like the, the dishes the flavors Okay, so I didn't grow up in like an Aruban family. I grew up with a Dutch dad and a Spanish mm -hmm. mom, or a Venezuelan mom, sorry. So I didn't get these dishes at home. Okay. But I heard from them or I got them at school or at friends. Yes, there are some. I mean, I, I think like when it comes to street food, most popular is like a stitchy, which is just a sort of crescent moon made out of dough with something inside. Most often it's cheese or it's shredded uh, chicken or shredded mm -hmm. meat cow's meat and then we also have a lot of stews which mm. i'm not fami that familiar with because i've never really tried any of them but we have a ton of uh, the traditional foods are very often like some sort of stew or some sort of soup of these fruits or vegetables that are quite exotic i know we have something called yuana stoba which is Basically, iguana stew. Iguana stew. Yeah. Um, huh, killing iguanas are is now illegal in Aruba because they're endangered. Okay. They're uh -huh. these really big iguanas we have. They're sometimes mm -hmm. like very green and they look very like majestic. Some people are also mm -hmm. scared of them. Yeah. Because they kind of look like dinosaurs. <laughs> and yeah, I heard that you can make stew out of them. That was really good. I've never tried it. Uh, oh, how do you know it was good? Because I've heard from people that it was good. When did they actually stop doing that? I think the ban, when by law you were ban you were not allowed to hunt the iguana, was already a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But it still happens. I mean, you can mm -hmm. be in your yard and you'll see one, so you can just shoot it with a slingshot or whatever you want. And uh, who's gonna check? And I, I don't. You, there's not really anyone who will control these type of things or. Mm -hmm. um, like come to your house checking that you're not doing this. So I think it still happens. I'd love to try it, even though it might be illegal. <laughs> okay. Uh, how it looks like living in Aruba, like the houses, how, how they look like? We have this, I think for me, I noticed that we have this very nice style of how we put the houses next to each other. Mm -hmm. When I for the first time, really observed in the Netherlands. I went to the Netherlands and I noticed that all the houses are in straight lines, in these little squares, all next to each other and all follow the similar structure, similar roof, similar walls, similar colors, and similar just sidewalk. But then in Aruba, yeah, you can see everything. You will... You, it's colorful. Yeah, it's <laughs> colorful. Some people will have a purple house or some people will have a green house, a mm -hmm. blue house. You will see... Literally everything. Walk. You can walk through one street, and you'll see a two-story house that's just brown. And then next to it, you will see this low, like Konuku-style house, which is <laughs> traditional, traditionally the architecture that was used in Aruba. Very often, it even has a chimney, which you might not wonder why we have chimneys in Aruba when it's always warm. But <laughs> exactly. With, yeah, it's. I think it's for the for the stove. So then you have these low houses, and they could be in any color mm -hmm. uh, most often i think they're like a little sandy like a sand color mm -hmm. but then the next house is i don't know some sort of less traditional house but it's purple and uh, so mm -hmm. on it goes every road having different uh style of houses and just different colors uh, i also like how it's so unorganized you will normally when you say okay i'm this street number three uh -huh. you go okay you drive into the street you go one two three it's a third house in aruba the first house might be number seven 
The second might be number one. The third might be number eight. Oh my god! And so you don't know where not which number is where because we 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 started building our houses and we just put down a house somewhere and then some guy put some house down on the other side mm-hmm. and he called that number two but they're not next to each other and now we just have numbers and letters that don't correlate to where the houses are. <laughs> but when it comes to numbers, like they don't, they can't have like the same numbers. Yeah. Right, because you will like... yeah. Sometimes even I think I've seen it where some two houses will have the, both the number eight, so then they just do eight A and eight B ah, okay. because they both wanted the number eight. So <laughs> I don't know how that happened. And then all the other houses will just be nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But uh-huh. those not those two had to have eight, eight, and so they put A and B. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, but that really seems like a colorful and like lively country. And like, how would you describe? The Arabian people. The Arubians are incredible. I think <laughs> they're very the just alive. I think they come most alive when it's carnival, really. I think this is where they show their true colors mm-hmm. and everyone's happy. Kids at school, they're ready to leave school and uh, start getting ready for carnival. They don't care if they spend the whole weekend up till like late at night, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 Mm a.m., they'll go to school the next day. In Aruba, when we do carnival festivals, Mm -hmm. instead of getting a vacation the day of the festival itself, we get vacation the next day. Because we know that it will go on till late at night and the kids will need to sleep. Yeah, so we often, when there's a weekend of carnival, Mm -hmm. we have Monday off. And like that, we have, I think, one or two or three, maybe even Mondays off because of Carnival. So it's actually very important to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Carnival is really big. I know we have another festival, which maybe would be nice to mention. It's called Diragai, which Mm -hmm. I think just means like quite literally bury the the chicken, but the male chicken. Why? Um, I think where I don't know exactly where it comes from the burying part, mm-hmm. but I know that in some places it was done festival or the, the this day was celebrated by having a chicken mm-hmm. in like over like a field or whatever, and then one guy would put on a blindfold blindfold and have a bat, and then he would try to hit the chicken until the chicken died. <gasps> I don't think it happens anymore. Probably doesn't. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think it's legal, <laughs> but it doesn't happen either. But still, people celebrate just the, the 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 day itself. What they do? I don't know if it's that they burn a lot of fires uh, or like not chickens. something like that. Not no no no. <laughs> they're not burning a lot of chickens. Uh, maybe they'll still eat a lot of chicken, uh-huh, but yeah. just but chicken store chicken. By, <laughs> store by chicken. Yeah yeah. yeah. And at school, sometimes we still play a game where mm-hmm. we put like a toy chicken hanging from the ceiling and then you put on a like a blindfold and you try yeah. to hit the, the toy chicken with a bat or something. I remember we like played games like that at school. In primary school, I played games like that on this day. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Do you have any like place recommendation or tips for the people who want to visit Aruba? Yes. Make use of the sea, I would say. Mm-hmm. For me, that's the biggest thing. I think when people come to Aruba, they visit the beaches and uh, they go to the popular natural pool or the natural bridge. And I think these are incredible places too. Yeah, definitely you should be at the beach and enjoy the beach. Mm-hmm. But maybe go surfing or go windsurfing, go sailing, go snorkeling. And I to definitely... Do activities. Yeah. And I would definitely recommend to go snorkeling, but along places along Aruba where there's less people, um, you might see more sea life, more coral. And mm-hmm. be careful, don't touch the coral. The coral is, yes. has to be left unharmed. But yeah, exactly. there's definitely some places where there's no tourists that are incredible. Okay, and worth to visit. It's definitely worth okay. a visit. Yeah. I wanted to thank you for doing a podcast or telling about the Aruba life. No problem. So that's it. It was Voices to Hear with Ola and Alex. See you in the next episode. Bye. Voices to Hear.